Thank you, Irina. And uh, the next uh, report will be done uh, in uh, photography and reproducing the painting in the 19th century from Franz uh, Hanukstangel by Anna Kask, PhD in Art History, Curator of Collection and the Visual Information Department the Pushkin State Museum. Thank you. And I have found myself in a difficulty because I will speak about uh, approximately the same thing that Irina has mentioned, but I hope that my report will add some strokes to beautifully painted picture by her. In October 1890, Three American art critic and uh, respected art historian Bernard Berenson wrote a little essay in the Venice that was devoted to reproduction of Venetian painting with the help of photography. This text can be considered uh, uh, certain celebration of photo reproduction and uh, according to the laws of genre this uh, essay uh, combined uh, the general uh, recollections uh, with the descriptions of specific uh, examples and uh, the author believed that the scientific uh, method uh, of uh, photographies of artistic uh, artifacts uh, really enriched uh, the toolkit and uh, methodology of uh, art history. Berenson also called uh, those who made the new era in art history closer. They were photographers and uh, successful photograph studios that were specializing in reproducing works of art, like uh, the company of the Alinaris brothers in Florence, uh, the Andersons in Rome, Adolf Brown and Co., and uh, Franz Hanstengel in Germany. Reproductions of all these uh, firms are in this or that way present uh, in uh, Pushkin Museum collections. And uh, reproduction archives as a scientific uh, and uh, reference uh, material was necessary for the art museum that was uh, conjured up by Tsvitaev in enlightening goals. And, uh, in our Department of Visual Information, there are reproductions done in Munich studio of Hans Stengel. And in my report, I would like uh, to touch upon several technical aspects of uh, photo reproduction of uh, painting in the 19th century, illustrating it with specific facts from the history of this company. Photo reproduction of the 19th century is applied photography. It has never posed uh, artistic uh, goals and uh, it was used and it functioned as means of information transfer and getting closer to answering the question on how much, uh, or how credible and how accurate uh, that information was. And we can reverse this situation, by the way, and uh, look at it at another angle in terms of what uh, photo reproduction was uh, accessible and affordable in those times. But in general, the approach to photography as part of art history, I believe, is very topical and it needs large-scale research, including reconstruction of uh, the context of production, spreading, storing, photo reproduction in the 19th century, and the question on uh, production and uh, Technical, technical production of uh, photo reproduction is a minute school, but really a very necessary step in that relation. One of the earliest uh, ways uh, of uh, reproducing uh, painting with the help of photography, like Irina has mentioned, uh, is uh, photographing uh, not uh, the painting itself, but the search for an intermediary, a monochrome copy, which is connected with the color blindness of early photography and with the help that the photographic material have uneven light sensitivity in different uh, spectrum range, yellow and red, 
do look black, almost black in early photography, and blue looks gray, and scholars have worked on increasing spectrum sensitivity during the whole century, but fully accessible spectrum turned up only in uh, the early 20th century. So this uh, color blindness uh, was discussed in professional communities of photographers uh, and uh, art historians. And Moscow University professor, the first in Russia, PhD in theory and history of art, uh, Karl Hertz, welcomed uh, in 1858 uh, reproduction of uh, paintings uh, of uh, old uh, masters uh, with photography, but uh, he pointed out that he did not uh, know a single satisfactory photography that would reproduce uh, oil painting. And he uh, even called uh, fake uh, reproductions of uh, Grisail. And uh, Frederick uh, Villot, keeper in Louvre, also treated uh, photography in uh, painting reproduction uh, negatively. And uh, Louvre even banned uh, photographing uh, paintings, uh, oil paintings, in 1866. There are the examples uh, of. Uh, monochrome uh, intermediaries uh, abundant and we can see it in uh, the current exhibition as well and I can give another example as well Hans McCarthy made his huge uh, paintings Venice uh, welcomes uh, Caterina Carrara and uh, Grisel and uh, the state public historical library stores an exceptional in terms of uh, salt print quality Uraj, beautiful pictures of the Imperial Gallery in Dresden in photographic images. The models uh, for these uh, photographs uh, were lithographs of France Hans Stengel, a German artist, uh, lithograph and photographer, person whose name, starting with 1868, was given to Munich Art uh, Publisher. And uh, there were several coincidences uh, that uh, entailed uh, the appearance of this uh, ouvrage and uh, the company as well. Franz Hans Stengel was born in uh, a peasant's family in the vicinity of uh, Munich, and when he was 12, his parents uh, took uh, the boy to the painting school and uh, to the lithograph workshop. He went on studying in the Munich Academy of Fine Arts, but uh, finishing it, uh, he refused uh, the scholarship uh, for the grant to live in Rome and uh, addressed portrait lithography that uh, he had already achieved certain success in uh, by that time. And uh, starting with uh, the second half of the 1820s, <coughs> there were no more successful uh, portrayal of Munich society than uh, him. And this portrait might uh, seem familiar to you uh, because uh, some uh, Russian language uh, websites devoted to Pushkin. This uh, picture of uh, Franz uh, Hanstengel uh, is said uh, to be uh, Dante's. When he already was a famous uh, lithographer, he won a bidding and uh, was commissioned uh, to reproduce in lithography the paintings from uh, the Dresden Gallery. So he went uh, to Dresden and uh, he drew 195 uh, paintings uh, in stone all in all and uh, he worked uh, using uh, mirroring uh, technique on the stone. So then he came back uh, to Munich uh, when the city was experiencing uh, photographic experiments uh, at uh, full swing. Professors of Munich University, Karl August Steinhel, worked uh, in the city and uh, 
he was physicist and uh, mineralogy specialist Franz uh, von Kobel. These scholars uh, were able to obtain their own photographic prints before Daguerre's procedure was made uh, public uh, in uh, 1839. And uh, Talbot's uh, follower was a Munich pharmacist, uh, Alois Lerherer, who lived uh, in the first story of the building that belonged to Franz Hanstengel. And it is obvious that uh, Franz Hanstengel was aware of uh, Lerherer's uh, experiments. And the witness can be this portrait that is a uh, salt print from Calotype and uh, Hanstengel, that is a portrait of Hanstengel uh, made by Lerherer. And Franz Hanstengel, a talented uh, artist, uh, could combine uh, creativity and entrepreneurship. Being a business person, he understood that uh, as soon as the wet colonial process uh, turned up, uh, he could use it, uh, and he decided to rearrange his business uh, and arrange a photo studio asking Lerherer to leave the place, and uh, he attains success pretty fast. That is a separate topic. And uh, then he goes back to reproduction again and reproduces uh, his own lithographies uh, on paintings from the Dresden Gallery. When photographing an, a painting, a huge role uh, on uh, fighting uh, the drawbacks uh, was given to retouch and uh, here Franz uh, Stengel was uh, very good at and he is called inventor of negative retouch so he was one of the first to start working with the negatives as he presented this idea in 1855 uh, in uh, World Exhibition in Paris and his outstanding skills in uh, retouching won him a gold medal there. And his willingness to avoid manual uh, correction and uh, relegate copying to devices exclusively gave birth uh, to a method uh, that uh, is unthinkable for current uh, museum keepers, and that is uh, treatment of uh, oil paintings to photographing, including uh, really very tough manipulation with the original. For example, covering uh, paintings with beer or mixture of beer and uh, soap solution, like uh, was uh, suggested in uh, our magazines, uh, German magazines, uh, advised to use kerosene, alcohol, and even garlic juice, and uh, a respected uh, Austrian uh, chemist, Josef Maria Eder, in the late uh, 19th century, suggested recipe that uh, became really popular to revive uh, oil painting, that is a mixture of glycerin, olive oil, sugar, and uh, egg white. In uh, the Alte Pinakothek in Munich in 1865, uh, there happened uh, certain incidents after which conservators were forced to conserve uh, the damaged picture. And I would like to thank uh, Irina, who is present in this uh, room, because he called my attention to this fact. The first uh, photographer was uh, inventor of Albert type, Joseph Albert, and the second one was Franz Hanstengel. And as a result, Philip Fergen, curator and keeper of the Alta Pinacotec, stopped licensing commercial reproduction of paintings, and uh, photographers were out from the museum. In 1868, the son of Franz Hanstengel uh, became head of the family business. And Edgar received a letter from his father calling him back to Munich to head the company. And back then, he was in China 
uh, heading uh, the tea selling business and uh, Franz Hauschengel was wide enough uh, to opt for Edgar who had this commercial experience, uh, not his uh, elder brother's uh, photographers. And under the leadership of Edgar Hauschengel, the family business turned into a world-known company with branches in London and New York with a new name, artistic uh, publisher Franz Hanfstengel. The concept of this artistic uh, publisher altered uh, with Edgar the leadership uh, and uh, lithography and portrait photography ceased to be priority. And, uh, Painting reproduction was the main focus of the company. The goal of uh, the company was now to have uh, painting masterpieces from uh, largest European museums uh, and uh, private collections. And uh, he wanted to make them affordable and accessible uh, for wide uh, public. And uh, they made a photo shooting of collections in 35 European uh, museums and it is natural uh, that it entailed uh, rearranging of uh, chemical labs, uh, photo labs, uh, photo pavilions, uh, also it entailed uh, launching some uh, productions and uh, if uh, in the early 20th century photographers uh, short uh, paintings uh, under the light of electric uh, arc, uh, gas, uh, benzene, lamps. Uh, professionals uh, in the early, in the, in the 19th century preferred uh, to shoot uh, paintings uh, in the sunlight, as was mentioned already. And uh, any artificial source of light uh, has uneven uh, intensity distribution depending on the spectrum range. And uh, it uh, adds uh, distortions to the end result. Whereas the daylight uh, can provide for maximally even lighting. And, uh, Special pavilions were arranged to, to shoot uh, paintings, uh, either with uh, glass roofs uh, that can be retractable, or like uh, in the Munich uh, studio of Josef Albert, uh, there were special rails uh, that uh, this could take the studio in the open air in sunny weather. And uh, another solution was rotary pavilions. One of them was arranged uh, in uh, Mili military Geographic Institute in uh, Vienna, and Edgar Hofstengel also opted for that uh, idea. He had two pavilions that allowed uh, him to maximally use the sunlight and uh, also cope with uh, all the blakes. And like Alina has uh, mentioned, uh, they treated cautiously shooting in the open air. Furthermore, transportation to the pavilion was uh, pretty dangerous as well. Therefore, the keepers sometimes uh, met photographers halfway, but uh, in other times refused. For example, in the second half of the 1880s, Franz Hamstengel received uh, um, <laughs> permission from uh, Rijks Museum and the city administration and Amsterdam mayor to shoot Rembrandt's The Night Watch, uh, whereas uh, the Dutch uh, photographer and uh, editor Andres Jager did not receive uh, the same permission. To get the prints from the negatives, what was used in the 19th century were very often photographic technologies like salt print, albumin print, uh, carbon bone print, so the array of uh, methods uh, available for photographers was so wide uh, that uh, the notion of photography for the 19th century is uh, an umbrella term used to denote a whole range of methods based on photographic principle. And uh, technologies were uh, very different and also um, photography in the 19th century um, uh, to the 
attribution of the method and many photographers, many photo studios tried to develop their own uh, algorithms of printing. So, for instance, um, carbon prints from Adolf Brown and uh, Franz uh, Hanfstengel, they all have uh, differences. And Edgar Hanfstengel was tracking all innovations which could improve the quality of uh, reproducing. So his company was one of the first uh, that started to use wet collodion plates, so was one of the first to buy patent from Karl Klitsch for uh, Helio engravings. And it was one of the first uh, that started to produce carbon prints uh, um, on a mass scale, so it could be turned. And also, um, even at the end of the 19th century, they were the most uh, stable. There was no other process for prints and reproducing as stable as this one. So carbon prints, um, which are stored in the collection of the Department of Visual Information, and there are several thousands of them, they are high-class artifacts uh, having an aesthetics of uh, uh, tailored uh, work of art. And I think it's clear that a reproduction in the uh, 19th century is relatively accurate. It can never render all the features of the original, and it also adds some of its qualities. So a carbon uh, print is the one and only uh, process where they turn from the light to the dark, um, uh, where, where this effect is gained due to relief of the pigment. And to conclude, I would like to say that Bernard Berenson and other art historians of the 19th century used uh, for photos uh, to get information on of the object. So the interest was mainly focused on the thing uh, depicted and very briefly the perceptions of old photo reproductions changed. So, Mm, the content of the photo uh, reproductions of the 19th century is no longer focused on the object of uh, photography. But now mm, it's more the author, the photographic uh, techniques, the type of prints, uh, the firm who was the producer are more in the limelight. And uh, it's relevant to uh, use an approach to photo reproduction of the 19th century as a phenomenon which really propelled the science of the art. And of course, um, it ev evokes such feelings as nostalgia uh, in researchers, but let's treat it as a phenomenon that uh, really supported science, focused on art and actually influenced um, culture and artistic creativity.